online, Stuart McIntosh with the BBC News. Hello. Ukrainian officials say plans by the Red Cross to open an office in southern Russia could legitimise what they describe as a policy of forced deportations. Irina Vereshchuk, Ukraine's top humanitarian official, said the ICRC was being used by Moscow. Anna Foster in Lviv has the details. One of the main areas that we believe this may be happening from is Mariupol. What we believe is that relatively few civilians have actually fled via those humanitarian corridors which have been agreed by both sides. Reports suggest that the civilians have really very little choice but to head out to Russian-controlled areas and to Russia itself. That is why the International Committee of the Red Cross uh, is being urged by Ukraine not to go ahead and open a centre in Russia because Ukraine fears that if that happens, it could be used to legitimise these deportations if they're happening. The Ukrainian military intelligence service is warning that Russia is trying to split Ukraine into two halves, similar to the Korean Peninsula. The intelligence chief, Kirillo Budanov, said President Putin was trying to separate the eastern and southern parts of Ukraine from the rest of the country. But he said that an eastern Ukrainian state under Russian influence would face fierce resistance and guerrilla fighting. The authorities in Shanghai say China's biggest city is to start phased lockdowns to curb its latest Covid outbreak, a day after saying it was too important to the economy to close down completely. Robin Brandt is there. In a city that's been on its knees for two weeks, parts of it reduced to ghost towns, the streets are now suddenly busy tonight with panic shoppers. I've been out and seen queues stretching out of doors as people stock up before the lockdown starts early on Monday. Almost 25 million people will be affected. The eastern side of the city first, then at the end of next week, the western side. Public transport will shut and all residents will be subject to mass citywide COVID testing. The president of El Salvador says prisoners in high security jails will spend all their time locked inside their cells in the latest measure to combat soaring gang violence. The country's parliament has approved a state of emergency to deal with the upsurge. Will Grant has the details. Passed in a late-night session, the parliament has given the police the power to make arrests without a warrant, to restrict the freedom of assembly and to monitor communications between suspected gang members. Combined with a series of arrests of alleged gang leaders, Mr Bukele's supporters see that as an appropriate response to the spike in murders. However, his critics argue that the emergency powers will almost certainly spark human rights abuses by the authorities and see the measure as another example of Mr Bukele's increasing authoritarianism. This is the World News from the BBC. Houthi rebels in Yemen say that a prisoner swap with the Saudi-led coalition has been agreed with the backing of the United Nations. The head of the Houthis National Committee for Prisoners Affairs wrote on Twitter that 1,400 Houthis would be freed in exchange for more than 800 prisoners held by the Iranian-backed movement. In Afghanistan, BBC television news programmes in Pashto, Persian and Uzbek have been taken off the air after the Taliban government ordered BBC partners to remove international broadcasters from their airwaves. The BBC's head of languages, Tariq Kafala, said six million Afghans consume the BBC TV news every week, saying it was crucial that they had access to impartial journalism. Mr Kafala called on the Taliban to reverse their decision. In motor racing, the reigning world champion Max Verstappen has won the second race of the new season in Saudi Arabia. The Red Bull driver took the lead with three laps to go from Ferrari's Charles Leclerc. He, it was a tight contest. The defeated Leclerc said he'd really been pushed so hard in a race and wished they could all be as good. Hollywood's biggest night of the year, the Academy Awards, gets underway in Los Angeles shortly, free of the pandemic restrictions that scaled down the event in 2021. Sophie Long is there. For the first time, the Oscars will be hosted by three women, comedians Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes and Regina Hall. It could be a good year for women in general. Jane Campion could become only the third woman in the award's 94-year history to win Best Director for The Power of the Dog. And if her cinematographer, Ari Wagner, triumphs, she would become the first woman ever to win in that category. Sir Kenneth Branagh's semi-autobiographical film Belfast about the Troubles has seven nominations, but it's unclear if he'll be in attendance after he tested positive for COVID-19. And that's the BBC News.